Welcome to our program today. It's Dr. Willie Nutt with San Jose Word of Faith uh, Christian Center. It's always a pleasure to have you with us again today. Last time I was with you, we were talking about the uh, woman at the well that Jesus was having a, a conversation with. And uh, the scripture that we were dissecting was uh, uh, found in uh, the fourth chapter of the book of uh, St. John. Uh, and more specifically, we're at verse uh, 8. And uh, what had happened is that the disciples had gone into the city and this woman had come to the well there that's found, Jacob's well, which is found in the city of Sychar. And she had asked the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ had asked her for a drink. Let's read it. And the night first, then said the woman to Jesus, uh, uh, the woman of Samaria, unto him, how is it that thou, uh, being a Jew, ask drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. So we see here that uh, this woman is um, puzzled because uh, their cultures did not per uh, uh, permit them to uh, overlap or to meet or to have uh, any kind of relationship. And so uh, this woman was offended by the fact that the Lord Jesus would ask her for a drink of water. And so I want you to observe that the Samaritan woman that made it clear to the Jesus that uh, that he was a Jew and that they had nothing in common and that she would prefer not to converse with him. And uh, it is unfortunate, but uh, one of the uh, biggest challenges for uh, other ethnic groups uh, I encounter as an African-American pastor is my race. Uh, but God has instructed me to give people a drink regardless of their ethnicity and their race. Uh, but many have gone away in their drunken stupor, still drunk and intoxicated uh, from false religion and erroneous uh, dogma because they just won't permit themselves to submit to my leadership. Uh, I am sure Jesus must have experienced the same feeling I expressed um, when the Samaritan woman rejected him, um, even his request for a drink of water because um, of his culture and because of her culture. And the point was that in her culture, it was taboo to fraternize and to fellowship in any way with someone from a different uh, race or culture. Nevertheless, Jesus did not give up in despair, but he persisted. And that's what we have to do. And that's what I do as a pastor. When people don't embrace me because of my uh, race or because of my ethnicity, then uh, I, I walk in love. And that's what we need to do. Walk in love and... Uh, uh, hold your head up high and realize that if people reject you, the point is you're still a child of God, regardless of your uh, ethnic background or regardless of your race. God does not make a distinction. He's no respect to persons. All of the sons of God are exactly, treated exactly the same. And uh, I'll have the same reward regardless of my race, regardless of my ethnicity, and so will you. Um, the point is the world is getting smaller and smaller. It's time for all of us to begin to uh, respect each other's differences and uh, uniqueness and, and applaud each other uh, for the contributions that we make. But the Lord Jesus Christ didn't give up in the 10th verse. The Lord Jesus persists, and I believe that's what we're to do regardless of how people treat us and whether they're turned off because we happen to be a different race or different ethnic group or from a different culture than theirs. Jesus uh, said these words to her. says, If thou, referring to this woman, knew the gift of God, that's fascinating here. And, what, and who it is that saith to you, give me to drink, thou would have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. Jesus said, listen, lady, I have something to offer you. And if you had asked me, I would have given it to you. Uh, and uh, what I have to offer is living waters. So in this verse, the Lord Jesus uh, uh, took the conversation off of his race and ethnicity and offered the woman living waters. It is unfortunate, but many believers fail to discharge their responsibility to declare God's word to the laws because of uh, the intended uh, converts' objections. And whether we like it or not, people uh, uh, may object to uh, what God uh, has for us, um, for us to, to share with him, but uh, we're supposed to persist in uh, sharing with those individuals regardless of what it is they uh, are objectionable about. Praise the Lord. It says, so if one would uh, take the uh, initiative, and I think we need to do that, and the time to consider the objection, uh, it would become clear that it is nothing more than a distraction 
a redirect authored by the devil to keep the children of God from uh, sharing the rivers of living waters with a thirsty soul. Um, when people um, act in this manner and uh, retort with those kinds of statements, say, hey, why are you talking to me? You know, we're totally different. We're a different ethnic group, whatever. And certainly you can have nothing to share with me that would be of any benefit. Uh, the Lord Jesus redirected her, her thought and began to, to open her up by saying to her, look, I asked you for uh, physical water to drink, and you denied me, but I have water I want to give you that will be uh, a refreshing. It's called living water, because I uh, uh, perceive that you, your heart is thirsty, and I have something that I can give you that will refresh you. So Jesus was not deterred by the woman's objection. He assured the woman that all she had to do was ask, and he would have provided her with living waters. You know, people are so devoid of faith that they often do not take uh, God at his word by simply asking for the blessing he has promised. It is clear that the woman's response, which follows, and it's clear from it, that she had no idea about the, what the Lord Jesus was offering her. And listen to her response in the next verse, the 11th verse. The woman said to him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with. She's thinking in terms of the... Uh, the natural, and the Lord Jesus was speaking in the spiritual. It's, it's amazing how we can be on different wavelengths uh, when we're in conversations. It says, and the well is deep. For whence then have thou uh, that living water? So many of the people that I meet today are just like that Samaritan woman. They are totally disconnected from spiritual realities. The things of the Spirit of God just do not compute. I, I talk to intelligent individuals that may have uh, significant degrees. And when I was in secular America, I had quite a few of them with, uh, that were well-read in uh, the carnal things of this world. But when I began to uh, speak about anything spiritual, uh, they were co totally disconnected. They had no comprehension of anything that had to do with the spiritual realm. And uh, from that um, observation, it's real clear to me that the spirit component is completely switched off. And it's unfortunate because the Lord designed us to exist as a tripart being, consisting of spirit, soul, and body. And uh, 1 Thessalonians 5 and 23 makes that very clear. Also, Paul said he would that our whole spirit, soul, and body be whole uh, until the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So our, our soul, the, the cognitive side of us, uh, uh, is uh, well activated in the lives of many people who are not saved. Uh, the physical prowess, especially when they're young, and they may be fit and they look good, they dress well. But then, unfortunately, the spiritual part of them is completely dead and trespasses in sin. And the uh, terrible thing is that most folks are unaware, completely unaware. Uh, we talked about the chameleon the other day that keeps them deceived and keeps their eyes closed and are blinded. Uh, that's the word of God. Apostle Paul, another instance, said that uh, he prayed that the eyes of the understanding of those uh, who have not um, been have, that have not been open to spiritual things would be open that they might comprehend with all the saints the length the depth the breadth and the height and to know the love of God that passeth all understanding. Then he said, "Who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we ask or think according to the power that operates in us?" So God wants to show uh, His power and His potential, His refreshing. Exactly what Jesus was saying to this woman. I have living waters that I want to offer you. Uh, I ask you simply for a natural glass or a natural uh, bucket of water from the well of Jacob, and you refuse me. But I'm going to give you something that's going to refresh your spirit. And uh, so the Lord is saying the same thing even out of the mouth of Apostle Paul there in Ephesians, the third chapter. He says that he will do exceedingly, abundantly above all that we even ask and think according to the power that operates within us. But our eyes need to be open so we can see. This woman was totally blind and could not comprehend what it was that she was, he was offering the woman. Um, so uh, that's what happens today. Many times we, we deal with people and uh, they, they just cannot comprehend spiritual things. And you ask them one question, they don't know really what you're asking them. So they go off in something they understand. But they're totally disconnected from spiritual realities. So the thing of the Spirit of God uh, is something that uh, one has to experience as a result of yielding to the Lord and um, 
Fortunately, a lot of people do come to that position when they get to their wits end and things are not working out with their intellect and not working out with uh, um, their connections. They finally revert to saying maybe prayer will work. And uh, when they do that, that's a good start. Praise the Lord. The Apostle Paul referred to the bulk of the people that live in our world today uh, in the following verse. It's found in 1 Corinthians, the second chapter in the 14th verse, which reads as follows. It said, but the natural man receive not the things of the Spirit of God. And we're talking about the natural people who live in our world today. Um, they don't receive the things of God, for they are foolishness unto them. Uh, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. So a person who is on a different wavelength cannot understand spiritual things. They're trying to understand God down here, or spiritual things down here, and uh, it, it, it doesn't compute. Uh, they do not have a perspective that allows them to embrace uh, things that pertain to God. So this scripture is clear. Uh, without a spiritual renewal in one's heart, no one can receive or know the things of God. And so uh, let us uh, reconnect to uh, the Lord's dialogue, dialogue with the woman, the Samaritan woman that we began in the fourth chapter. And let's go this time back again and, and look at the uh, 11th verse. It says, The woman said unto him, Sir, referring to the Lord Jesus Christ, Thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou this living waters? Um, unbeknownst to the woman, she has spoken prophetically in which she said, Thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. The implication is that one requires something with, with, with to draw water from any well. So in the spiritual dimension, the prophet Isaiah told us, who are believers, how to withdraw spiritual waters and he said there in Isaiah 12 and 3. This woman didn't know that. Of course, Jesus knew. But in Isaiah 12 and 3, it said the following. Therefore, with joy, therefore with joy shall you draw waters out of the wells of salvation. So uh, our attitude of heart um, is certainly key, a key element in accessing the wells of salvation. The word salvation is used in that particular verse, Isaiah 12 and 3. Let me read it again. Therefore, with joy shall ye draw waters out of the wells of salvation. The word salvation used there means deliverance, health, uh, help, welfare, prosperity, and salvation. It's clear from uh, this definition that all of the resources that we need are embodied in that word uh, salvation. In other words, there's a will that will meet all of our needs and go beyond our fondest expectation. Uh, Isaiah called that well the well of salvation. I want you to observe that the wells of salvation is plural. Uh, it's a plural here in this verse. Wells, plural, of salvation. And uh, what that means is that there are many wells to refresh the child of God. There's a well of deliverance, of health, um, of help, welfare, prosperity, and a host of other blessings uh, that uh, are not mentioned here. If you look at that same word, salvation, uh, in the uh, New Testament, more specifically, if you were to look at Romans uh, 10 and 9, uh, the apostle Paul gives us this injunction, says, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and, and believe in thy heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Uh, those two words are... Uh, are are closely kin, salvation and save. Really, uh, soteria uh, is the base word it comes from in the Greek in the New Testament. And it means the same thing. It means wholeness, soundness, deliverance, same thing that, as it meant in the, the Old Testament. And uh, so uh, this is something that there's multiple wells that are available uh, from which to draw uh, to be refreshed uh, by the Lord. Therefore, our joy as believers is our buckets. So the joy that you have is a bucket that you use to withdraw uh, the, the resource of salvation that God has for us. So if we allow the enemy to steal our joy, then the enemy has taken our bucket and our ability to be able to draw. It's our bucket, it's our ladle, it's our dipper that permits us to withdraw uh, from the, the wells of salvation, the resources that God says we have. The psalmist makes it clear that if one is living in the Lord's presence, he will be filled with joy. And he says it here. That, uh, that joy that God has is something uh, very clearly uh, articulated in Psalm 1611. Thou shalt, wilt show me the path of life. Here, uh, David is speaking prophetically. 
He says, in the, thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. So he's making it very clear here is that as believers, we need to get into the presence of the Lord. Uh, this woman didn't realize it, but she was in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ, where there's an abundance of joy that's available to her. And it says, and at his right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. It's amazing how we try every other path rather than a path of life. Here, the psalmist opens up saying the Lord is going to show uh, him the, uh, the path of life. And the path of life leads into the presence of the Lord where there's fullness of joy and pleasures forevermore. Uh, it, it's amazing to me how we take all kinds of paths many times rather than the path that leads to uh, the salvation that God has for him, the deliverance that he has and um, the, the abundant supply to meet all of our needs. The Lord Jesus made it clear in John 10 and 10, the thief comes not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy, but I come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. So there is a, a completeness that God has for us, an abundance that he wants to, to share with us as believers. And it's unfortunate that uh, uh, so many people don't see that, that, that God, the Lord Jesus Christ, is, is offering us relief in our lives, and the, the path that leads to life will get us to the refreshing in the presence of the Lord. Uh, in that verse in Psalms 16 and 11, it um, also connects to uh, a verse that we uh, shared earlier. Let me read Psalms 16 and 11 again so you can hear it in proper context. It says, Thou wilt show me the path of life. And that's something we need to utter out of our mouths. The Lord is going to show me the path of life. In the, thy presence is fullness of joy. Not just joy, but notice he says fullness of joy. Um, at thy right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. I mean, that's strange, isn't it? Talk about in the Lord's, in his presence, his right hand, there's pleasures, pleasures uh, forevermore. There are delights that go beyond our fondest dreams. Um, the, the Apostle Paul tried to make reference to that in uh, 1 um, Corinthians, the second chapter. He says, eyes haven't seen, ears haven't heard, neither has it entered in the hearts of man the things that God has prepared for those that love him, but yet it has been revealed to us by his spirit because we have the mind of Christ. So our minds need to renew, be renewed so we can comprehend um, with all the saints, as Paul says, the length, the depth, the breadth, and the height, and to know the love of God that passeth all understanding. That's love is expressed right here. said, in his right hand are pleasures for evermore. That means they never wear out. God's pleasures continue and continue and continue, certainly throughout our entire lives and also through the annals of time as we leave this life, uh, the pleasures that God has for those that embrace him will continue. There in St. John 3 and 19, uh, we addressed this a little earlier, this verse, in the New King James Version, it says, uh, repent and be converted. Uh, that's the first step. Change your mindset, how you think that word repent means to change your mind, your thought process. Uh, it says, in order that your sins might be blotted out, uh, so that the times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. So there's two things you need to do. Uh, repent, therefore, and then he said, and be converted in order that your sins may be blotted out. First step is to get your sins blotted out by changing your mind and changing your behavior. And said, then the times of refreshing may flow from the throne of God. In order that, that your sins may be blotted out and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, that your sins may be blotted out. So there's some acts that we need to do. We need to acknowledge that what we have been doing is wrong and also... Uh, change our behavior, and the Bible says that uh, then the times of refreshing will come from the presence of the Lord. The refreshing of the Lord will begin to flow. The wells of salvation will spring up because of the joy of the Lord, uh, which comes from one living in the Lord's presence. It is true that the well is deep. The refreshing, the waters of life will come up from great depths, for the Lord's, from the Lord's subterranean water supply, which we addressed in previous weeks, that follow believers, um, is referenced uh, earlier in Psalms uh, 78 and 15, to satisfy the, the true believer's desire. If you're a true believer, the Lord wants to refresh you, and the Lord wants to give you access to uh, his subterranean stream. The Lord is waiting for us to command the blessing that he's promised, God is waiting for us to take uh, our spiritual rod in our hand, representing the Word of God, which means you need to read the Word of God and speak to the rod. 
The rock has already been smitten. We addressed this earlier by Moses, uh, typifying the fact that the Lord Jesus was smitten when he died on Calvary's cross, that he was whipped, he was beaten, and he bludgeoned for us. He became sin for us that we might be made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, that we might have right standing with him when we appropriate what the Lord Jesus did on Calvary's cross, dying for us, saying, to the Lord, I appropriate the debt that you paid for me, and I submit myself to your lordship from this day forward. I take myself off the throne of my life, and I place you on that throne and submit to you and to uh, your lordship. That's basically what I said earlier in Romans 10 and 9. The scripture is used for salvation. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. If you simply say with your mouth, I want Jesus to be the Lord of my life, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, referring back to his death, his burial, and in his resurrection from the dead, uh, he said, you will be saved. You will be delivered. You will, you will be made whole. You will be helped. Uh, and uh, you will be promoted. Uh, you will be healed. You will be prospered. All of the things that embody a full life, a life of joy, uh, a full life, are embodied in that particular verse. When we confess Jesus as the Lord of our life and begin to live for him in earnest by changing our attitude of mind and uh, changing our behavior around about face and going in uh, a different direction, a direction towards the Lord and uh, walking this, that path that he laid out for us that leads to life uh, and then be in his presence, live in his presence and receive the fullness of joy and the pleasures forevermore. And it begins here and now. Uh, joy unspeakable and full of glory. As we pray in the Holy Spirit. And as we submit ourselves to God. And we stir up the, the rivers of the living waters. That we talked about in previous lessons. Uh, as an act of our will. That we agitate it again. So that uh, it stays fresh. And it stays vibrant. And does not stagnate. And it does not, uh, no stench can can come there because it's not a polluted pool, but it is one that has been stirred up and refreshed from moment to moment, uh, again, by the act of our will. We don't allow ourselves to stagnate. We do not allow the waters of life that's in us to, to, to be blocked up and not flow with full force. Uh, we keep uh, the channel between ourselves and the Lord open so that the blessings that he has for us that comes from his presence can always reach us here in this earth realm, praise God, and we can then rule and reign as a king in light Praise the Lord, uh, because we've been translated from the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of his dear son. Praise the Lord. Uh, I thank God for that transfer that has taken in my life and in the life of all the other believers that there are certain benefits we have that others do not have. Praise the Lord. Take the rod in your hand. Take the word in your hand. Praise the Lord. Uh, put that word in your heart and begin to speak to the rock and uh, the Lord will release is refreshing for you um, even in the day in which we live. So this woman continued to her dialogue with the Lord Jesus in verse 12 uh, of uh, John, the fourth chapter. And it says, Art thou greater than our father Jacob, who gave us this well and drank thereof uh, henceforth uh, himself and his children and his cattle? So he drank thereof. So he was, people are always trying to take you off on some wild goose chase. Uh, people are not spiritually enlightened. They regularly insult believers with comparisons to the pharaohs, the apostles, other notables that have preceded them, implying that uh, uh, it is the height of arrogance to expect that God will perform similar feats of the supernatural in their lives. It's unfortunate that even many in the clergy who should know better make those kinds of statements and inferences to those who would dare say that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Behold, I'm the Lord thou God, and I change not. Those that would dare to say that the works that Jesus did, I do also because I am a believer. In accordance with Romans, excuse me, with John, the um, 14th chapter and the 12th verse. He that believes on me, the Lord Jesus said, um, he that believes on me, the works that I do shall he do also. And greater works than these because I go unto the Father. We need to have that expectation in our lives that uh, we have the same rights and duties. Uh, he told his apostles just before his ascension, he says, you're to teach them who the apostles were to teach the converts that came to the Lord Jesus through their teachings to observe all things whatsoever uh, he had commanded them. That word observe literally means that the apostles are to teach us to emulate everything that they did in their lives during their earthly sojourn. 
So the Lord wants us to be initiated. He wants us to do the notable feats, the same ones uh, that they did even during uh, that day. So in the verse, uh, the Lord Jesus promises us that we can do the same works that the apostles did, and he expects us to do greater works because we're now the agents, his ambassadors here in the earth realm. He gave us the authority uh, to operate as trees of righteousness, the plantings of the Lord, that he might be glorified. God gets glory. The Lord gets glory out of us doing notable feats. Isaiah, the 61st chapter, the third verse. So Jesus answered the Samaritan woman's question concerning Jacob's well in the 13th verse. And this is what he said. Uh, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. So in this verse, the Lord Jesus is making it clear that natural things are temporary and that uh, they're not designed to last. They always come to an end. Natural water and natural solutions only temporarily quench, quench the thirst and satisfy our cravings. The Lord then continues his dialogue with the woman, offering her an alternative to natural waters, a different kind of refreshment, water that will quench all her thirst uh, and never run out. And he did this by saying, but whosoever drinketh of the waters that I shall give them shall never thirst, but the water that I shall give them shall be in them a well of water springing up unto everlasting life. God bless you, friends. Please join us next week. This is Dr. Willie Nutt. I trust you've been enjoying our program. I look forward to seeing you then. God bless you. Hello. Thank you for listening to this resource. If you would like to receive our audio DVD catalog or desire more information about our ministry, you may write to us at P.O. Box 612-822, San Jose, California, 95161. Dash two eight two two, or you may request information via our website at www.sjwoffcc.org. We look forward to hearing from you. God bless you.